Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's a second example of how to do a maximum problem in calculus. And this problem here asks the following. What is the largest rectangular area that can be enclosed by 100 foot of fencing? And then, just to make it interesting, would the area be larger if we make it into a circular fence instead of a rectangular fence? So that's the second part of the problem, just because I was kind of curious to figure out, find out myself. But anyway, let's do the first part of the problem. And again, so we start out with a, uh, with a drawing always. If you don't have a sketch already provided for you, uh, make sure you make a sketch. So let's say we have a rectangular area. This is the width, this is the length. And then based upon what they give us, that the, uh, the, the fencing we have available is 100 feet long. That means that the perimeter must be 100, meter long, uh, 100 feet long. So the perimeter, which is equal to 100 feet, uh, is equal to twice the width plus twice the length. And that then will be our constraint, which you will see in just a moment. Okay, so once you have a picture of what's going on here, uh, now the first thing we do is figure out what's being maximized. And in this case, we're trying to maximize the area and close. So A max is what we're trying to find out here. Okay, once you've determined what that is, now you want to come up with an equation to determine the area. And so the equation in this case would be area equals the length times the width. All right. Um, now, of course, since length and width are two different variables, you cannot continue on with the problem until you eliminate one of those two variables. To do that, we're going to use a constraint. So step three, we're going to find a constraint. And here it is that 100 must equal two times the width plus two times the length. That's all the fencing you've got. So let's let's uh, equate that equation for one of the variables in terms of the other. So let's say we solve for w. So that means that 2w is equal to 100 minus 2l. When I move the 2l across the other side, I have 100 minus 2l, then I switch the equation around. Dividing both sides by 2, I get w is equal to 50 minus l. So with this relationship between w and l, which came out of our constraint, I can plug that back into our equation, and instead of writing w, I can write 50 minus l, so the area is equal to l times 50 minus l. And now I have an equation I can move forward with because there's only one variable left in there, which is l. So simplifying this a little bit, I have area is equal to 50l minus l squared. What's the next step? The next step is to find the derivative of that equation. So for a prime equals, in this case, it would be 50 minus 2l. And then after that, we take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So step 5, so set the area, the derivative area equal to 0. And so when we do that, we get 0 is equal to 50 minus 2l. And then finally, we're going to solve that equation for L. So solve for L. And so when I move the 2L to the other side, I get 2L is equal to 50. Divide both sides by 2, L equals 25. So in order to get the largest enclosed area, when I try to get a rectangular uh, space with a 100 feet of fencing, the length has to be 25 feet. Now if the length is 25 feet, then we go back over here, the width, is equal to 50 minus the length, which is 25, which means the width also has to be 25 feet, which means that we end up with a rectangle, not just a rectangular, but a square uh, area that's being fenced off. Like let's say that there's a little meadow and I want to fence some, some area off so I can put my sheep in there, my cow in there, whatever, to do some grazing. Not that you'll get a big piece of land that way, but um, that means that the maximum area can be fenced in if you make it square instead of rectangular. So in this case, the L must equal the width, must equal 25 feet. And that's the answer. Now, just out of interest, would you get a larger area if you took 100 feet of fencing and made it into a circle? Well, let's find out. If you make it into a circle, then you know the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi r, which would be 100 feet. All right, so what would be the area of that um, circle? Well, if the radius is equal to, well, we have to find what the radius is in this case. So, so, from, so from here, we can say that 2 pi r equals 100, which means r is equal to 100 divided by 2 pi. All right, and the area 
for a circle, area is equal to pi r squared. So this would be pi times r, which is 100, divided by 2 pi. And we have to square that. So this is equal to 10,000 divided by 4 pi squared. And then we have still a pi in the numerator from here, right there. So then this pi cancels out that pi. And so the area, if we make it into a circular um, region, would be 10,000 divided by 4 pi. Now let's see if that's bigger or smaller than what we have over here. Now, by the way, what would the area be? Well, since the area is equal to the width times the length, and each of them are 25 feet, we would end up with a 625 square foot area. And let's find out how big this is. So 10,000 divided by 4 divided by pi. And guess what? We would end up with an area that's slightly bigger than 795 square feet. And oh, look at that. If you want a little bit bigger area for a sheep or your cow and you only have 100 feet of fencing, make it into a circle rather than a square. But if it has to be rectangular, you, you realize that a square is the largest rectangle you can have for a specific uh, given perimeter. All right, example number two. So let's even come up with some more examples to see how you do maximum problems in calculus. But just to kind of review a little bit, again, step one, find out what's being maximized. Step two, find an equation with the given variables for the thing that you're trying to maximize. Then, using a constraint, eliminate all but one of the variables. Then you take the derivative of that equation. Then you set the derivative equal to zero, and then you solve for the variable, and then of course, once you have this value, using your constraint, you can solve them for the other variables. But that's the general way in which you solve maximum problems.